Hello and welcome to the Lathwaite Stadium for Woking versus Solihull Moors in the National League. Uh, you're listening to BBC Radio Sorry. I'm Ashley Adamson Edwards. I'll be providing you with full match commentary for this afternoon's fixture. I am delighted to be joined by Woking regular club Chapman as well, our regular match day summariser, Ian Nicholson. Ian, how are you doing? Hi Ash, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I'm loving it at the Lathwaite Stadium. It's, it's, it's a bit hot. It's a bit it's, hot. It's <laughs> so, so hot. Darren Siles in his shorts and uh, no wonder. it's like, I think it's the hottest, is it the hottest day of the year or what, close? What, it feels like it. It, feel, it does. It, it does. It really is. So uh, it's going to be very interesting, particularly with Woking's uh, pressing game. I'm going to I'm going to be very impressed if they keep that going for the whole 90 minutes. Absolutely. Well, I think there is going to be a drinks break at around about 25 minutes for all yeah. the players. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank God for them as well. Should we quickly, just before kickoff, run through this Woking yeah, lineup? Yeah, do, do. We've got Will Laskelainen in goal, number 22. We've got, then got number two, Dan Moss. Number six, Luke Wilkinson. Number four, Scott Cuthbert. Number three, Josh Casey leading the team out as captain. Number 21, Emmanuel Oyelecki. Number 16, Tunji Akinola. Number 17, Jim Kellerman. Number 20, Zach Bradshaw. Number 10, Pat Podrag Ammond and number seven Ricky Corboa on the bench number five Greg Taylor number eight Robbie Wilmot number 12 Matt Robinson number 23 Jermaine Anderson number 15 Nana Quoteng Ian what do you make of that team? Well firstly well done on on Ammond Ammond right. it's taken me a year to get to it but it's I think it's more like it's Porrock Porrock Ammond Porrock Ammond Porrock Ammond and uh, great to see Manny Oleki back. He he had a short spell with Woking quite a few years ago under Gary Hill and is a quality player. Great. I, I remember his contribution to a great comeback against Halifax last game of the season. And uh, great to have him back from injury. And uh, also great to have Jermaine Anderson on the uh, bench. Uh, so uh, two players coming back from, from injury. Absolutely. And I believe we're about to have a minute silence out on the, uh, out on the pitch. So... We'll stand by for that. Stand, stand by, the commentary will be back in just a minute. Watch the power specs. There we go, we're back. The teams are just moments from kickoff here at the Lathwaite Stadium. Chance for Woking to go three games unbeaten, a chance for that third consecutive clean sheet. How important is that clean sheet aspect, do you think, Ian, to Darren Sarr's side? Well, I think it, with... Yeah, I think it's very important because I think Darren, Darren has set out his store really on saying that keeping Woking tight at the back is a core to his philosophy. And uh, earlier in the season, there were a few really sloppy goals given away. But the last last few games, it's been a lot tighter. I have to say, I was at Maidenhead. You know, Maidenhead really threatened, really pressured, and uh, working held out. But it's uh, and it's good to have Lou Wilkinson back at the back. So Cuthbert and Wilkinson were the centre of everything. It's it's the last season back for, and. Uh, That'll be reassuring. And we have kicked off here at the Lathwaite Stadium. Will Laskelainen with a long kick forward. It's just been headed down for a corner kick for Woking on this right-hand side. Josh Casey going over 
to whip one in. Some attacking play straight away from Woking here. Oh, Yaskin Island sticking his right hand up. Looking for some options. Can Woking kick off this game nice and early? With a very strong start. He's got Ricky Corbo as a short option. The cross is whipped in at the far post and it's caught quite easily by Tommy Simkin. And he collapses onto the floor with the ball in his arms. Rolls it out to his right hand side to his fullback. Ball just on this right hand flank now. It's a long ball forward down the right wing for Solihull Moors. But that's met by Will Jeskelainen in the Woking goal. Will Jeskelainen just inside the first minute here. You're listening to BBC Radio Surrey. Wilkinson on the ball now. Uh, a ball into the middle of the pitch. Zach Bradshaw back out to Casey on this left hand side. Just past the halfway line. It's now come into the middle. Long ball forward down this left hand wing. There's a chance here and it's met by Tommy Simkin. Both goalkeepers seeing a lot of the action so far. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been, uh, yeah, it's been an interesting start, but it's uh, nice to see Oleki look for create creative ball forward, which was a bit too long. But uh, yeah, as I said earlier, it's great to just see him back on a pitch, really. Absolutely. And there's a long ball forward by the Moors keeper Simkin. It's headed back by Cuthbert into the middle of the pitch, headed back towards Cuthbert, and he deals with it again down this left-hand channel. Woking are going to chase it down this left wing, but it's rolled out for a throw in to Sully Hall Moors. James Clark here, down to the right hand side of the Sully Hall Moors half. He's looking for options. Can he can he create anything? Two minutes into this National League fixture, it's it's come forward now. Sully, Moors, Sully Hall Moors are through on the right wing. It's blown for offside, and nearly <laughs> nearly caught them out. Well, it's those things of these late flags, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's it, To me, it just seemed, I just saw offside and then nothing happens and then he kicks the ball forward and suddenly the flag goes up. So, uh, yeah, yeah, but a good little black flick on another day, a little bit of creativity, might, might have created something, but on this occasion it was it was a judged offside and it was offside. Thank God, Ian Woking's case is a long ball forward from Masculina now all the way down to this right-hand side. Woking have it on the edge of the box on the right-hand side. They've crossed it in. There's a header. Hasn't quite met it. It's down here, back into the Sully Hornmore's possession. Almost a chance for Woking. They've cleared it all the way up. This right-hand pitch, though. Cuthbert has come together with the Sully Hornmore's man. Woking resume possession. Almost a chance there for Woking. Dan Moss down this right-hand side now. He's tried to find Jim Kellerman. It's rolled back out to the Sunhill Moors, man. It's down this right-hand side of the Woking defence now, and it's cleared out of the stadium. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Absolutely a, no nonsense there. A rifle smile and hand up there from Luke Wilkinson. Get Woking have very little width, I would say, in this team. Yes. Yeah, this setup, and uh, and we saw that a little bit there. Ball played out to Kellerman, ride on the white. He's not, anyone who knows uh, Jim Kellerman will know he's not a natural right winger. So uh, no. It's a long ball forward, no flag for Sully Moors. They're down the left-hand side with their number 10. Woking desperately trying to defend this, not trying to let any ball in the box. They've scored it in their left wing. They're into the box now, Sully Moors. Wilkinson seems to be dealing with it, and he has. Yep. He's seen it out very nicely for a Woking goal kick. Very well done, but you can already see that Sully are lively up front because that ball forward, I thought, for, for all the world, was offside. Yes. And, and the, the flag never went up. And uh, at this moment, you give the benefit of the doubt to the... Uh, to the assistant referee and just have to say well they were quick in, in uh, adapting to that it seems like we're going to see a lot more of those instances throughout this yeah. throughout this afternoon anyway Joe Wilkinson on the ball he's trying to find a long option down the right hand side Sully Moore's headed back though and it's sprayed into the middle Cuthbert's there to meet it for Woking he's played a long ball forward through the middle that's met by another header Sully Moore's to have it down in their left hand side with Cade Craig now they've played it forward it's a free kick to Sully Moore's Dan Moss with a controversial challenge there, according to the referee. Sully Hall Moore is now with a free kick just in the left hand channel of their own half. Tommy Simkin, Sully Hall Moore's goalkeeper, will be taking. Can he cut open Woking? There have been a couple of chances so far just inside this first five minutes where that's happened. A long ball forward down the right hand side of Woking's defence. That's met with a header by Josh Casey. Sully Hall Moore's Try to whip it into the box, but their number 10 is there, and the header towards goal, and it seemed to be a goal, but the flag is oh. up, and Josh Kelly has very nearly opened the scoring for Sully Hall Moors. 
Yeah, if there's ever a warning, that came from nowhere, really. Ball in, Kelly. Kelly was really on his own and uh, headed headed well. Uh, Jeskalainen got low, got his hand to it. He sort of fizzled into the corner, but thankfully for Woking, it was a judged offside. A couple of chances already here, where Sally Moors have seen to cut open Woking quite easily at first glance. However, they're trying to press the ball on this right-hand side now. It's headed back by Dan Moss. Ayeleki has it in the middle. He's played it inside to Corboa. Corboa has given away possession, though. Uh, it's Dan Moss that resumes it. Back to Kellerman now. Corboa. Kellerman plays it inside. Woking with a bit of space in the middle now. Out to the right wing. Oh. It's seen the good ball. It's rolled out for a Sully Moore's goal kick, though. So good from Woking there. And uh, it was Ayeleki who... He, he did a lot of the initial good work and then that final ball was just over hit and he immediately knew it, but it was uh, it was good interplay, ball to feet uh, with Moss, Oileki, Kellerman and uh, then the final over hit ball. Fast play, wasn't it, really? Seems maybe yeah. that width won't be too much of a problem if they can repeat chances like that. Well, I think if you haven't got the width, you've got to, you've got to look to mm -hmm. go, go sort of quick passing in midfield and... Uh, and um, that's what, obviously what they were trying to do. Absolutely. Simkin punting a goal kick forward for Salihul Moors now on this right-hand side. Cuthbert tries to meet it. It's rolled all the way through. Salihul Moors have the ball just on this right-hand side of the working penalty area. They resume position on the right wing now. It's sprayed all the way forward into Corboa. He's tried to head it down. They've lost possession, though. Can Woking counter on this? It's in the middle. They've lost the ball, and it's back with the opposition defence all the way back to Simkin. He plays a long one forward. Wilkinson, it's rolled all the way through to Jaskalainen in goal. Down to Dan Moss now. Dan Moss, he's found Kellerman on the right-hand side. He's tried a dummy, he's lost possession though, maybe a bit clumsy from Kellerman. It's just bounced over Darren Siles' head and it's out for a Sully Moore's throw-in. Good cover from Moy Lakey and already in this first, what is it, five or six minutes you've really seen... Uh, Manny Oyelaki get involved. Yeah. How long he has in the game coming back from injury, we'll have to see. But uh, obviously Jermaine Anderson on on the bench. But it's uh, it's been a positive start from him. Absolutely, quite arguably Woking's best player so far. Casey's got it on this left-hand channel. He tries to find a long ball forward on the on the left-hand side for Corboa. However, that's too far as well. Simkin has it for Sully Holmes. Still with possession in Simkin. We're about eight minutes in to this National League fixture between Woking and Sully Hall Moors. You're listening to BBC Radio Surrey's match day commentary. Cuthbert has met a long kick with a header into the centre. Oyeleki on the ball now. Woking with the ball in the centre of the pitch. On this left hand side with Bradshaw now. They're trying to find a way through the Sully Hall Moors defence. There's a long ball forward to Bradshaw, hasn't quite made it, Corboa is on the left hand side of the box, he's got a little bit of space, can he cut it back, is there an option here? He's twisting, he's turning, but it's eventually found out by the defence, he's, he's still on the ball on this left hand side, the cross has come in, can it be met by working head? Cross down on the edge of the box, Kellerman is there, comes back to Oyeleki, Akinola on the ball now, Bradshaw, Bradshaw tries to find his pass through, it's fallen, it could be a chance, but it's just gone out for a goal kick. A pass across the box and almost Woking had their chance. Yeah, great work by Woking. A couple of attacks there, really probing and and trying to find that space. Good defence as well from Solihull. They were on their man and uh, they seemed to snuff out Ricky Corboa, but then he came back on the ball and, uh, yeah, very, yeah, good work from Woking. And, so, and then corner to come. Corboa. Cool, Woking with the corner now. On the left hand side. The right hand goes up. Whips in the ball. Is it met by Woking header? And it's just almost looked like it was turned in by Wilkinson there. But it's gone out for a Solihull Moore's goal kick. Not a bad spell these last five minutes. No, now. no, excellent. And, uh, you know, Solihull obviously come on a run of very good form. Unbeaten in the league and. Uh, Woking have been a bit hit and miss this first few games, but uh, certainly been on the front for this first 10 minutes. That seemed a real chance. Simkin with probably about his fourth goal kick so far, just inside these first 10 minutes. 
He is absolutely, absolutely scorching down at the Lathwaite Stadium. He's played it long down this right-hand side yet again. Cuthbert is trying to meet it. It's rolled all the way through now to Sullivan Moores with a shot. And Will Askelainen is there to meet it with a simple save in the end. But it was quite a powerful shot and a lot of space in behind goal. Yeah, that was Matthew Warburton and uh, really um, was never particularly threatening because I, th I would say Askelainen had it covered. But uh, it was direct pull forward. Warburton got the ball, let the shot fly, Jaskalainen caught it, but it was a, a powerful shot. Absolutely, Cuthbert heading it down on this other side, Casey trying to get it out of their defensive third, it's now in the centre of the pitch with Amund, Amund trying to close it down, long ball forward by Solihull Moors, Cuthbert dropped back, but he's let it roll all the way down for a Woking goal kick. We're going to be updating our BBC Radio Sorry listeners very soon. Oh, Jaskalainen with the Woking goal kick at the moment. Goal kick from Will Jaskalainen. There we go. The room for Woking on this left-hand side. I'm sorry, George, I can't quite do two goals, but there have been a couple of chances for both sides. We're in the 12th minute now, and it is still nil. A couple of chances where Sully Moores came forward with some deadly passes, and all of a sudden, yeah, they're in behind with Woking's defence. Thank God on a few occasions, the linesman did put his flag up for Woking manager Darren Sarles' case. However, Woking have had a decent last five minutes. A couple of nice passes through the centre of the pitch, unlocking this Sully Moores' rigid defence. Still the only unbeaten side in the National League side so far. Emmanuel... Oyelecki returning from injury has been a crucial part of the creativity of this Woking side so far. We've got a free kick for Sully Moores here, but at the moment, George, it is nil-nil, and we're just in the 13th minute. There we go, Sully Moores with a ball down this left flank here. Kelly on the ball. He's turning up to Wilkinson. Wilkinson trying not to let him slip through. He has done. A wall has come into the box, but it's gone back out. Bounced off Dan Moss for a corner. Kelly looks a tricky player here. Yeah, great work there by Kelly. And uh, for a moment, I, I mean, a, a stanchion was in the way, but he beat a couple of men and then he went out for a corner. But for a moment, I was uh, feeling there was going to be a dangerous ball coming in there. We've got a long throw in by the looks of it, by the run-up for Sully Moores on this left wing here, just by the corner flag. Corboa trying to get in, in his way. It's come into the box now. Long throw in, but it's dribbled back out. Woking do have a chance to counter with Kellerman on this right hand side. Looks like it's dribbled all the way back through to Sally Moore's keeper. Simkin, though. Simkin looking for an option. Woking really pushed up the pitch, trying to press this defence. A ball all the way forward in this right hand side now. It's been headed back by Woking and back out for a throw in. Yeah, I don't want to tempt fate for Woking fans, but, you know, long throws and corners. Woking are really. I would say among the best in the league for defending those and uh, and then it's about the breakaway and uh, Porak Amand was uh, away really but he, he couldn't quite get to the ball and uh, then it came back Josh Casey header out so uh, sort of give and take there I guess well, here comes Simkin once again for the opposition he's looking for that long ball forward once again Wilkinson trying to meet it they're going to relax they're going to calm it's gone all the way back to Will Jeskelainen in goal yeah, interesting that Solihull are really, you know, whenever they can, they're going for quite a long ball there. And yeah. uh, and Kelly raising his arms, you know, to to the keeper saying, what am I meant to do with that? But uh, it's obviously, you know, managers set up tactically before games and they've obviously thought that's a that's an approach to take in the, particularly in the early stages. Well, there have been a, a couple of chances where that ball has just dribbled through and, you know, the, the heart is in your mouth a couple of times. Yeah. Were, but yeah. were there chances against Maidenhead when that happened? Or, I mean, you spoke about the defensive rigidity that they've had in the last couple of games. Have you been seeing that today? Is it Was it the same against Maidenhead? No, no. Well, uh, I mean, against Maidenhead, I, I would say they actually defended very, very well. But mm. I think it was more a midfield challenge. I think Maidenhead, you know, played very well played very direct I mean Maidenhead at Maidenhead is a real challenge it's quite a steep slope you know one half you can think oh this is easy and then the next half you're suddenly up against it and uh, 
I think Darren Sull has commented that they are very strong at their home ground. So in that sense, a lot of fans were saying, you know, although you might say, well, Maidenhead, Maidenhead, but actually a, a draw against Maidenhead at their own ground is pretty is pretty good, and they have a knack of really churning out the results. Oh, so um, I think, no, I I, I, I think it's it's been pretty impressive. Long ball forward there, Corbeau, and nearly snatching on the end of that. Long ball forward from Woking. There turns out a go at the Sully Hillmore's defence, but it's a triple back through to Simkin. Sorry to interrupt you there, Ian. No, no, no Sorry. worries. It's almost like a pre-season friendly, this. Partly the weather. It's largely the weather. It's like this should be August or July <laughs> or something, and instead we're, we're a week or two into September. And uh, But it's uh, you just hope the game doesn't run out of steam just yeah. because of the just amount of energy the players are giving out really absolutely it's, it's certainly been quite far paced there's been a lot of long balls for these defenders and attackers to chase down both ends so far we're still nil nil just inside the 17th minute now Woking possibly had a chance there to snatch on the end of a loose pass from Sully Moores and Kellerman's trying to challenge this this left back from the visitors they've got the ball just inside the the, the Woking half now on the left hand side he's looking for a ball through to Kelly he's through on goal now one on one with Yaskalainen and a massive chance and he slotted it under the legs of Roy Yaskalainen it's one nil to Sully Hormoz that was some finish and some ball through yeah it was a well worked move there out, out of nothing really from midfield from within their own half and uh, midfield players were coming forward hard to tackle them because they were moving forward and then suddenly the ball through to Kelly and he took it so well so well and through Yaskalainen's legs although I wouldn't say that Yaskalainen did anything wrong I think he just came out and uh, made himself big and it just went under his legs but it's uh, uh, from nowhere really that goal from y Solihull and uh, good goal really was from nowhere that's Josh Kelly's fourth goal this season quite the start he's having really did come from nothing just one pass really nice pass arrowed towards goal through this Woking defence one on one with all Yaskalainen he's tried to close the space tried to make himself as big as possible it's just slotted straight under the keeper very composed from the Sully Hornwell striker well we're in the 18th minute the opposition now have the lead you're listening to BBC Radio sorry still there is a sense that there's still a way back in this for Woking stay tuned game is certainly not over yet However, the possession with Woking is now. Sullivan Moores attacking down this right-hand side. Woking trying to rush to get back. A challenge comes in there, and the referee blows the whistle. Seemed like a decent challenge, Ian? That was harsh, I think. I think, well, I'm old, so going in for that sort of tackle. I mean, it wasn't a tackle from behind. It was sort of, and uh, Manny Orlakey did well. Referee's talking to him, which I think is ridiculous, but it's... Uh, um, Oh, and a yellow card, which is even yellow more ridiculous. Card. I think, oh, I think really he, he he did well there to cover, go for the tackle. He won the ball, and um, there we go. Had a bit of disgruntlement there as well between Kellerman and, and Ross. They're having a couple of issues defending down their right-hand side. That was where the goal stemmed from, really, wasn't it? Yeah, Maybe it was through that midfield, and, and I think, it, again, it was Ori Lakey trying to get the yeah. tackle. He couldn't without giving away the free kick, so he shadowed the player, and then the ball was through for There's a free for kick Kelly. for Sully Moores now, though. They've got it in this right-hand side. The ball comes into the box, and it's a huge chance there. Nearly got on the end of it, but it's Willie Askelina that has calmly collected it in the end. Almost sieved through that Woking defence once more. Everything just needs to calm down a little bit for Woking at the moment. Willie Askelina... Looking for a long option. I suppose all the way forwards. Just inside the attacking third of the Moors defence. Central handball there for Woking just inside. The, Wo the Sully Hall Moors half. Yeah, Zach Pratchaw puts his hand to his head, but it was definitely a free kick. <laughs> definitely. definitely handball. Got his upper arm and... Uh, Didn't seem like a natural position, did it? <laughs> no. Not quite. Sully Hall Moors with the free kick. They've taken it early. They have it just inside... The Woking half on the right wing. Oh, Yalecki jostling Ooh. for possession. He hasn't hasn't got it back, though. Josh Kelly's through on the right wing for Solihull Moors. Can he find an option in the box? He has done. There's a huge shot forward. He's offside. He did convert into that bottom left corner. But thank, thankfully for Woking, that linesman's put his flag up. Yeah. Really, really fast-paced chance there again. And again, we're Moors. seeing with Solihull. And again, it was Kelly. Kelly was the man who made the difference. A lovely little ball in, but uh, and then uh, and then we had Warburton just putting the ball home. But it was uh, 
he was offside so thankful Woking there Woking let off for that one certainly struggling here in these opening 20 minutes really it seems like there's just these quick passes through this Woking defence really aren't helping them, there's a long ball forward from Jaskulein and down this right hand channel Kellerman trying to meet it, he has it's a lofted pass in the middle, it's fallen to Corboa, he's re resumed possession over to Bradshaw, Corboa's trying to chase it down this left hand side and a penalty, huge penalty shot, sends a penalty to Woking, a ball forward Simkin absolutely clashed into Corboa and the referee has had absolutely no second thoughts about it Ian no. No, and it was, it was, uh, I was just about to say, I've been thinking the last few minutes, haven't seen much of Ricky Corboa there, but it's a tricky ball in, he was on it in the penalty area, got to it, I'd love to see the, the video, but he got his foot to it first, keeper came out and took him out, so uh, it's one of those where, uh, well done Ricky Corboa. Fantastic uh, pace, fantastic pace from Corboa. Clashed down by Simkin then, absolutely no question in the mind of the referee. Standing over this ball now. Amund. It's Woking's interesting as Amund comes up and prepares. Working players aren't focused about the penalty. They're coming no. out to get liquid. liquid they need intake. this water in this extreme heat. But Woking have a chance in the 22nd minute to equalise at the moment. Can they do it? Woking have a chance to get back into this game. Amund steps up, right-footed. It's saved by Simkin and it's over the bar. A huge opportunity missed by Woking. The score remains 1-0 to Solly Hormoz. Wasn't it a great penalty, was it, Ian? No, it was... Uh, he hit it low. Keeper went the right way. It wasn't in the corner and didn't have huge power. So uh, the keeper, keeper got, his, got his hands to it and then it bounced up and over the goal. So very disappointed for Woking fans, but uh, well, well saved by Tommy Simkin. Well, Woking have a chance to come back against that penalty miss. They've got Corboa just short on a corner. It's whipped in now at the front post, but it's cleared with a header back out to Dan Moss by the halfway line. He's looking for an option. Corboa's on his left, but he's found Kellerman on the right-hand side. Kellerman back to Moss. Moss with a long ball forward down the left-hand side. Trying to find Kellerman. Uh, Amund there. It's gone back out for a Solihull Moore's goal kick. Couldn't quite reach that. Couldn't quite glance it towards goal. Good pressure from Woking, good to get back on the front foot after that penalty miss, which was uh, so, so disappointing, and uh, remains uh, Solihull one ahead. 23 minutes into this first half. You're listening to BBC Radio Saudi's match show commentary. We'll be updating our BBC Radio Sorry listeners very soon as well. There's a long ball forward from Woking. Well, unfortunately for Woking Cameron, it did go the way of Solihull Moors. It chance really came from nothing down this left-hand side. Woking tried to get a challenge in, but it was a ball straight through the middle of Woking's defence in the end, where Josh Kelly, top scorer for Solihull Moors, joint top scorer, who bared down on goal with Jaskalainen, very composed and slotted it through. There is a chance for Solihull Moors here, but Cuthbert is there to reach it. That was the, the opening goal for Solihull Moors. They opened the scoring through Josh Kelly, his fourth goal of the season. Woking, though, came straight back down the other end. Five minutes later, a quick ball forward for Corboa. He used excellent pace to chase down this ball. He couldn't quite make it, but Simkin instead absolutely clashed into Corboa. Referee, no second thoughts about it. Pointed to the penalty spot. It was a penalty for Woking. It was a big moment to equalise. Unfortunately, though, score remains 1-0 to Holly Moors. The penalty from Amund wasn't quite good enough. It wasn't in the corner. And Simkin matched it with a decent save and tipped it over the crossbar quite luckily in the end. However, we are just into the 25th minute, Cameron. Unfortunately, for Darren Sahl's side, it is still 1-0 to Holly Moors against Woken. And Mafuta there booked for Solly Hull. Um... Seemed a bit aggrieved. It was a couple of players going in, but uh, referee had no hesitation. There's a free kick here for Woking. They lobbed it into the Sully Moore's box. That's headed back out to the edge of the box, though, and it's on the right-hand side. It's trying to be chased down by Akinola. Couldn't quite get there. Dan Moss, though, picks it up just inside the Moore's half. It's come back into the centre. Not the best of the balls, but it's found Casey. He's all alone. Looking for options. Back down to Dan Moss on this right-hand side of the defence. He's played it to Kellerman. Kellerman looking for an option. Back into Wilkinson. Wilkinson down to Casey. Casey 
He's got Zach Bradshaw asking for a pass, but instead he's gone for Oyeleki. Oyeleki back to Cuthbert and then back out to Casey on this left-hand side. Casey is trying to find Corboa. It's had to be cleared quite well in the end. That could have been a dangerous opportunity down that left-hand side. And we've got, is that a substitution or a oh, drink break? Drink break, drink the referee break. is... No wonder. Well, I don't know if you noticed me. the end down Sol. Absolutely lashed his, his water bottle onto the floor just a, just, a, just a minute ago. Not too happy with how the game's going no, so no, far. No, no, he, he, he won't be, but it's... Uh, it's It's been I a tricky want, first 25 minutes. I don't want to defend the players or anything, but quite players coming off, quite a couple of them there putting... Three or four of them... Put, well, they're all putting wet wet uh, blankets on their heads, taking in liquid and uh, really doing whatever they can to recover here. Definitely. These conditions are one of a kind today here at the Lathwaite Stadium. Seen working at Sully Hall Moors. Just in the 26th minute, we're at our drinks break because it is scorching over in Woking. It really is. You would not predict this kind of weather for, for the, the almost the middle of September. But we're in the 26th minute. You know, listening to BBC Radio, sorry, it's match day commentary of Woking versus Sully Hall Moors. Live National League action. Actually, while we've got a break, can I mention the sunflower lanyards that I know are being given out around the ground today? Uh, if, if, if listeners aren't aware of sunflower lanyards, they're, they're things that people wear when they've got a hidden disability. I so see. if you ever see someone with a sunflower lanyard on, it could be they're hard of hearing. It could be, well, it could be all sorts of things, really. And, uh, and so uh, it's, uh, the club has started a, a sort of initiative about recognizing hidden disabilities and uh, certainly I, I you know I know from several relatives and friends you know how who've had challenges and it can be very embarrassing if people can look at you and think well you're normal and you're not they're not aware that you're struggling with something so uh, so well done to Woking on the Sunflower Initiative and the Sunflower yes. Lanyards if anyone sees a Sunflower Lanyard have a bit of patience and uh, th there's a reason people are wearing them Absolutely fantastic awareness there as well. They were giving them out earlier, I think. Uh, that's I was right. right, in yeah, right. Yeah, okay. yeah, fantastic. That's right. Fantastic, yes. These kind of conditions aren't always too clear to see. So I have an understanding. And that is fantastic initiative, regardless from Woking. Soon be getting back underway. Woking did have a throw in down their left hand wing. Looks like Casey will take it. We're in the, into the 28th minute now. Still trailing by one goal to the visitors. Can they look for potentially a long throw-in? Can they look for a quick option? Zach Bradshaw trying to come short to Casey. It's thrown into Corbo though. He's got two players on him. He's been brought down. Bradshaw has it out on the edge of the box, though. Kellerman now back to Oyeleki. Oyeleki down to the Casey on this left-hand side. Back to a uh, one-two, back to Casey. He's almost through. Corbo on the edge of the box. It's nice play from working. A shot towards goal, but it's saved. Back out to the edge of the box. It was a fast shot from Corbo there. Nice piece of play from the home side. Great work by working there. Playing to feet. Interaction. Oil Lake to Casey. Quick throw now that we're following. And uh, great shot by Corbo. Woking certainly trying to build on this momentum. They've got Kellerman on the right-hand side. It's brought into Corbo. He's playing excellently at the moment. It tried to roulette. It hasn't quite come off. Sully Hormoz resumed possession. Tried to bring it forward. Josh Kelly's gone down, arguing that he couldn't get on the end of the pass due to a challenge from Wilkinson. Referee's having none of it though and Dan Moss has resumed possession of a throw in into Cuthbert. <laughs> what did you make of that Ian? Well I thought Josh Kelly was going for it there really. He just turned and fell over and uh, Lou Wilkinson who's been around a bit just put his arms up and said what was that about? Well it's been sprayed forward down this left hand side. Hammond not quite reached it. Corner, corner, it's my mistake, goal kick for Sully Holmes now, Simkin. That was a, a very nice passage of play, Woking had some yeah. real aggression in that attack there. Corboa, potentially been the best player in this first half. I, I, I would say in terms of possession, I mean it's been a very even game, in terms of mm. possession, Woking probably edged it, some lovely play, but you know, the clinical thing is taking the goal and that's what Sully Hall have done and... Uh, they have their nose in front. Well done to them. For a top striker as well. Josh Kelly was very composed with that opening goal. The home side do trail to Sully Moors at the moment. Coming just into the 30-minute mark now. You're listening to BBC Radio. Sorry, it's match day commentary. There's a throw-in for Sully Moors just on the halfway line. The right side of their defensive half. 
trying to get it down this right wing. It's come in now. Cuthbert's trying to head it. He's tried to be flicks on. It's down this right hand side. Can Salihamor get a ball in? There's no one there to reach it though. And Yaskalainen's done very well. However, the referee's calling for a back pass there. Oh. Ross Moss has tried to give the ball back or let the ball see through back to his goalkeeper. However, the referee has had none of it. He seems to think he's touched the ball. Well, Yaskalainen has then picked it up, and the referee has called for an indirect free kick very close to the Woking goal. Well, I, I don't know what you thought of that, actually. I thought that was ridiculous. I think it was a ball across. Didn't touch it at all. To Woking, it? if he touched it, it was inadvertent. I mean, so many, so many games you see semi back passes that aren't given, and suddenly that's. Uh, that's given as a we back do have pass, to give so. it to Jay Ben though for Solihull Moors on this right side for getting that ball in. He did well to get that it, pass. No, into it was the a box. good ball in, but there were no Solihull no. players within 15 yards probably. Regardless, really close to this working goal now. On the left-hand side of the six-yard box, Solihull Moors have an indirect free kick. They've woken. I've got five players, six players, sorry, standing behind Will Yaskilainen. A huge chance for the visitors to double their lead. Josh Kelly is standing just to the right. He's looking for that layoff to then blast it into the net. Huge moment just in the 32nd minute. We're waiting for the referee's whistle. Can Woking defend this? Can they hold on? Keep the scoreline just at 1-0. Many anticipated fans, many anticipated Woking fans behind the goal. Can they keep this out? Huge chance. Six players behind Will Yaskulainen. And it's played in. It's a shot. And it's just gone past the left-hand side. Just past the post. In the end, it was a wasted chance. Didn't bother those six defenders at all in. Yeah, in those situations, you've got, what, eight eight players on the six-yard line, another two or three in the penalty area, and you've just got to take your chance and hit it, which Matthew Warburton did and uh, was wide of the post. But I do think it would have been a travesty if, if anything had come from that because I really didn't think uh, it was a bizarre incident. Darren Sarr wouldn't have been too happy with that one if that ended up in the in, in the back of the net. No. To say the least. Cuthbert has the ball now. Over to Wilkinson. Wilkinson inside to Oyeleki. He's being pressed here by the Solihull Moors attack. He's turned away nicely down to Casey, though, on the left channel. He's tried to find Bradshaw. Bradshaw has picked up the ball. Very calm on the ball, Bradshaw. Has been throughout this game. Cuthbert now on the ball for Woking. He's found Kellerman. Kellerman looking for Moss, a long ball down this right-hand side. Let's pick the ball up, like straight back to Wilkinson. Can Woking pick out a player? Can they thread through this Sully Hornwell's defence? Cuthbert now. Casey on the left-hand channel. Back to Cuthbert. They need that movement, they need that, that run. A long ball forward from Cuthbert. He's tried to find Corboa. It nearly leaps all the way through to Amund. Sully Hornwell has headed it back across, though. Here comes Casey on this left-hand side. He's tried to find Corboa. Corboa somehow hung onto it on the left wing. It's a tricky situation for Woking. Casey's been got a nudge in the back. He's on the ball now. Back to Corboa. The two doing very well. Casey's oh. nudged back the Solihull Moors opponent. The referee's had none of that. And before, he didn't blow his whistle, Ian. No. I, and, um, you know, Woking fans will know Josh Casey well. In the past, he used to go over very easily. But there he went through. That was a foul. And... Uh, wasn't given, and then a minute or so later it was given to Solihull, but it was a, a tight play, tight play by the touchline, and uh, in the end it comes out with a Solihull, Solihull free kick, which Tommy Simkin will take. And that's been taken down the right wing, a long ball forward. Cuthbert has met it, though. He's come back into the centre for the opposition. Canola's done really well to resume possession. Woking have a chance on the counter now. Through Kellerman, down the right-hand channel for Ammon. Can he keep it in? And he hasn't done... Almost a very big chance for Woking. Yeah, frustrating there. Good work by uh, Akinola and Kellerman came onto the ball. Ball out, to the, out wide for Amund, but just over hit, really. Solihull Moors with the throw in now. With their left back on the left-hand side of their defence. It's thrown forward. Headed down. Potentially a handball in there for, for Woking. Kellerman's kicked it back towards the Solihull Moors back line. And that's been flicked out for a throw-in in the end. The referee's decided for Woking. Just just ahead of the halfway line. On the right side of the pitch. Dan Moss with the throw-in. He's got... Well, you're lucky to the left of him. It's been thrown down the right-hand side. 
jostled between teams, but it's been kicked back to Wilkinson. He can calmly receive the ball. He's got Cuthbert with him, and it's gone back to Cuthbert now in the centre of the defence. All the way down to Casey. Woking shifting it from right to left. Casey now looking for that decisive option. Back to Cuthbert. Wilkinson looking for that final pass. Kellerman now back to... Tried to find it back to Mossy. Somehow kept a hold of the ball for Ialecki. There's a potential foul in there. The referee has had none of it, despite a lot of calls from Woking. In the end, it seems like he's given a throw in to Woking. They've taken it quickly to Koboa now. Over to Kellerman. They're calling for a foul again. It's another throw in for Woking. Further up that touchline now. Dan Moss. He's found Koboa. Koboa touched it down. Kellerman's there in support. He's run through. He's tried a back hill to Kellerman. He has found him. But it's not the best situation from Woking now. Tucks into this corner flag on the right-hand side. It's come back. Swung in from Woking. There's a header potentially there to meet it, but it's dribbled down to the left wing. Casey keeps it in play, though. Almost a chance for Woking for a glancing header. But Zach Bradshaw now. And back to Casey on the left wing. Casey tried to nip past his opponent. It's been cleared and all the way back to Cuthbert in defence. A nice spell there, Ian. Yeah, good, very good pressure from Woking. A couple of shouts, really, for free kicks or whatever that weren't, weren't given. But uh, mm. it's, um, yeah, good pressure. Eventually, Casey and uh, Casey and Bradshaw down in the corner and they're on different wavelengths. And Have Casey been... played the ball, which Bradshaw wasn't really anticipating. No, not, not in the end. I've been, I've been impressed by Bradshaw's effort, though. His work rate so far has been... He's been trying to get onto those final passes, even when they've been a bit too heavy. He's still putting in the yards. Yeah, and he, he's he's been excellent since he joined, uh, obviously, at the, gate, the Gateshead game was the first game. Uh, Vasali Hormoz trying to open up this working defence here, and it's almost almost found Warburton through on goal, but Will Jaskalainen, in the end, is calmly collected. Classic away team, really, particularly when you're 1-0 ahead. You know, you, you defend deep, suck up, suck up the pressure and then look to hit on the attack. But that the, one was just too ambitious. That back line has potentially gone from a 3 to a 5 now. They're really potentially trying to soaking up that player and then just look for that that one pass that will set them through on goal. Corboa has it for working this left-hand side. He's darted forward. Bradshaw now. Casey. These three have looked dangerous in this half. Casey now, through to Amund. Amund looking that pass to Corboa. He hasn't found it. Just outside the edge of the box. Woking trying to keep hold of the ball. Oyeleki now. Oyeleki flick down to Bradshaw. As calls for a foul in. The Sully Hormoz defender yeah. clashes into Bradshaw. And this could be quite a strong chance to cross it in here. Yes, dangerous position out on the Woking left. So you're swinging and in swinging free kick. Often puts the defence in a bit of uncertainty mm. you know, as the ball and the keepers in a bit of uncertainty. You feel this game is just waiting for, you know, Solihull defending well. They've got the nose in front, but it's just waiting for Woking to get back on level terms and then it will all open up again. Absolutely. Standing over it is Oyeleki. Can he find an option at the back stick? They're st Woking is still trailing 1-0. 38 minutes into this first half. Oyeleki now whips it into the back stick. Can it be met? Cuthbert's there. And it's almost, almost found its way through. Cuthbert clapping his hands in anger. Dribbled out for a Sully Hormoz goal kick in the end. Yeah, good ball in by Oyeleki. Swipped in and uh, really, what, you want to ask why did it go straight out for a goal kick without mm. a defender or an attacker getting, the, getting their foot to the ball and uh, just looking for someone to sort of gamble a little bit. Come back. We've got about six minutes left this first half before added time. Woking still looking for that equaliser after Josh Kelly opened the scoring for Sully Moors. You're listening to BBC Radio Sorry's match day commentary. This National League fixture. Corbeau are jostling for the ball, but it's gone out for a throw in now for the opposition. James Clark looks to take the throw in. Weather is unprecedented for these players it's absolutely scorching and the throw-ins come down to Casey he's headed it into the middle here it's been flicked on Kellerman's tried to reach it he's gone in with a challenge but a ball forward over to Warburton now so Josh Kelly my mistake on this right hand side Cuthbert he's done well really well against against Kelly there it's bounced off the corner flag it's gone out for a throw-in to the visitors yeah Cuthbert covering Kelly well there as the ball bounces forward, but mm -hmm. it's as far down the pitch as you can go, hitting the corner flag yeah. and going out for a throw-in. Not too often that happens, certainly. Sally Moores, James Osborne, their captain now, 
with the throw in. Can they get it in the box? It's thrown into the penalty area. It's headed back out by Woking, though. Can they get the ball forward? Corbeau with an excellent turn. He's been brought down. Really, and really surely, strong, surely that, that, strong pull on the shirt. That should be a yellow card. Absolutely. Ke Woking were very close to breaking through with yeah. a counter-attacking chance. And it is a yellow there. card, yeah. Yeah, and what we've seen from both those long throws is Woking won them comfortably and they're away. And their Corbeau was away and, and, pulled, and pulled back. Salihul Moors, I've tried it with the same player on both sides now yeah. as well. They're, they're, yeah. they're trying to exploit Woking with this with their captain Jamie Osborne with a long throw in, but it hasn't worked both times rightly rightly said by yourself Ian. Here's a here's a three kick for Yaskal Island though. Halfway through his half it's down to this right hand side. Ammons tried to reach it. It's almost made its way back through. So ball forward Wilkinson's found it. He's booted it forward up towards his attackers. It's into the middle now. Dan Moss headers it back back towards Zach Bradshaw. Zach Bradshaw trying to race down this left-hand side, trying to recover that ball. It's the visitors that have possession now on their right-hand side of the defence. It's come through to Corbeau. It's a sloppy pass, though. He's got a lot of space in the middle of the pitch. He's tried to find Oyeleke through. That could have been a strong chance. Oh, tried the reverse pass there. Ian. Yeah, good good work there. And, here uh, comes, here comes Casey. Casey's away. Casey on the ball. Sully Moores did well. They've got a lot of players back at the moment. It really is, at the moment. All 11 players behind the ball. Zach Bradshaw, though, does well to hold onto the ball in the middle of the pitch. He's got a bit of space. Akinola. Oyeleki. Looking for an option. Casey has come, the, has got the ball on the left-hand side. It's done to Bradshaw on this wing. Used his strength well. He's kept the ball on the left wing. Calls for a Sully Hormos throw-in, and the referee's given it. Yeah. Yeah, good, good play by Woking. Yeah, they're looking to probe, and... Uh... But really, not cut, not really, you know, Solihull are defending in depth. Now they've got their noses in front, they're really defending deep. And uh, it's it's down to Woking to break them down, really. It seems like the Woking is, uh, the, sorry, the, the momentum is with Woking at the moment. 1-0 down, just three minutes from the 45th minute now. Zach Bradshaw over to Kellerman, Corboa on the left wing. Darted inside, nice play from him. It's fallen to Kellerman, this is a nice play from Woking, but a nice challenge to meet it from the Solihull's defence. It's come all the way back to Eskaline and calls from the Woking fans to get this ball forward. They want this equaliser desperately before half time. Still 1 0 to Sally Hormores. It's come to Corbo, back to Cuthbert now. Dan Moston, a lot of space in this right hand side. Kellerman not really making the movement though. Wilkinson now. Cuthbert. Trying to move a little bit, advance a bit down into this. Sully Hormoz side. Corbeau's tried the one two of Casey. He hasn't pulled it off. Sully Hormoz really sitting back now. Cuthbert. Over to Akinola. Down to, da to Dan Moss. Kellerman. Wilkinson. Kellerman in the right back position now. Wilkinson looking for an option down the right hand side. He presses forward into the centre. Over to Corboa. Can he find a pass? A decisive pass, maybe. But it's been kicked back out by the Silent Hormones stance. You can tell Woking are desperate for this equaliser before half time. Yeah, they're playing very well, Woking. I mean, bizarrely, you know, missed penalty and uh, a goal conceded. But they really have been very positive and very impressive this half, I would say. And yeah, uh, dis just despite haven't really found that, that yeah, moment. To snatch a goal. Despite this heat, they've really come with the energy in this these last kind of last five minutes. Yeah, they as have. Well. Yes, they have. Wilkinson now with the ball. Over to Kellerman on the right hand side. He's missed the ball though. Anger from the Woking bench there. Just giving away possession to the visitors. Visitors that lead heading into half time 1-0. Yeah. So throw in to Sally Hormores. Woking, you know, they could build on this momentum and into the second half. They have played exceptionally well during these last 10 minutes now. The heat scorching down. You can see there's a reason why why Solihull are unbeaten. I mean, their their defence has been very, very solid this first half. Mm -hmm. Forget the goal, because the goal could have been cancelled out with a penalty, but the, the defence has been very, very good. Very good indeed. Potentially still a way into this this game for Woking now. Wilkinson has, has hit the ball forward long to Corbo. He's jostling for the ball. It's been brought down and all the way back to Wilkinson. He's knocked it back to Jaskalainen in goal for the home side. Cuthbert now. Huge shouts from Downsall there. 
get the ball forward. Cuthbert over to Wilkinson. Six minutes out of time, a lot of plenty of time for Woking to get back into this game. Kellerman now, he's missed that, lost out on possession though. Warburton has it for Solihull Moors. Now into Osborne with the captain, into the centre of the pitch. He's been brought down by Kellerman. The referee's having none of it. A lot of chance for Woking to push no. forward now. Zach Bradshaw, Zach Bradshaw to Kellerman, back to Bradshaw. Can Woking capitalise on the mistake? And Bradshaw's tripped over the ball. And Solihull Moors have the ball once more on the right hand side. Could have been a big chance there for Bradshaw. It's nice for McAnola to, to win back possession. Wilkinson down to Dan Moss. He's got a lot of space on the right hand side of his half. Back to Wilkinson. Over to Casey. Casey. Bradshaw is telling him to go back. And he has done to Cuthbert. Cuthbert to Bradshaw. Down to Casey, just inside of this Sully Hall Moore's half. Over to Amund. Amund back to Cuthbert. Had a lot of the ball recently. He's trying to cut open this, this opposition that's really sitting back at the moment. Wilkinson tried to squeeze through to Corbo. He has found him just outside of the defensive line. He's potentially been tripped. The referee sees that as a fair tackle. Ian? Yeah, no, I think it probably was. But Corbo, whenever he gets the ball, he hasn't seen a huge amount, but... He is dangerous because he's yep. so quick-footed and he can make something happen. But uh, but there he was uh, clobbered, as they say, and, uh, and fairly so, in my opinion. Well, he won that penalty earlier on, didn't he? He used his pace really well yeah. to get into that, yeah. into that. Yeah, he's done very well this season. Very well indeed. Dan Moss into Corboa. Back to Dan Moss. Can he find a long ball forward to Amund? Amund has headed it back. Almost find Kellerman. Kellerman on the right wing now, jostling for the possession. Corbeau has picked it up. To Moss. Moss over to Corbeau. A nice play from Woking. Can they press? But Moores have resumed possession. Kellermore. Now Akinola with a ball into the box. It's a oh. weak one though. Salim Hall Moores capitalise on that error. Casey though on the left wing. Got possession back for Woking. Cheers from the Woking fans. Can they get back into this game just before half time? Casey pressing down the left wing. Pass one potentially, and he's he's lost out. And Sully Hall Moores with a strong defence again have, yeah. have cleared it. Yeah, Josh Casey left with very little option then but to take on the defender. And he's not a winger, he's very good out wide and he can create things with a, with another player, but he he was unable to uh, make anything happen there. But now with Lou Wilkinson to uh, Dan Moss. Dan Moss, over to Kellerman, now to Amund on the right wing, a little bit of space now, he's looking for a pass, he's crossed it into Corbeau but it's been met with a headed clearance, down to Oyelecki, Oyelecki's trying to find a man, it's now with the Sully Hormors, right back in Jay Ben, he's trying to just calm down his team, Sully Hormors desperate to get to this half time break ahead, they've got it with Jay Osborne in the middle of the pitch, down to the left hand side, in Cade Craig, Cade Craig, Back into Warburton. Warburton, a couple of a couple of options. Woking trying to regain possession. Solihull Moors, unfortunately for Woking's case, have kind of taken the sting out of the game on the ball now. Yeah, they they've um, managed it well. It's been in that sense, it's been very professional. You have to say the last, you know, particularly the last 20 minutes, it's been all Woking all in woke. terms of possession pressure, but. Unable to make chances because Solihull have defended well and Solihull have taken their one chance. It's great composure from, from Josh Kelly to come to think about it. It was. Four it goals was no, it was. Season. It was a well-taken goal. Well-taken indeed. Dan Moss down to Kellerman. Can he create something in these final minutes now? We're into added time. About, about two minutes left before the half-time period. It's come all the way back to Yeskilainen. Yeskilainen now. Searching for that man. Kellerman's pointing to the right wing. Is there a potential long ball forward down that side? He's opted for the left-hand channel instead to Amund. Amund headers it inside. It's found Bradshaw. He's done well to hold on to that. Casey now. Casey into Oyelecki. Oyelecki, he's looking up. He's looking for that, that, that key pass. Dan Moss. Dan Moss on his own on this right-hand side. Back to Wilkinson. In the middle now. Amund, he's lost out again to Sally Hormoz. It's such an organised defence. Back to Wilkinson, agonising for Woking at the moment. Down to Dan Moss, he's got a bit of space, but he hasn't been able to keep it on. Andy Wing, clapping to the fact that there's another throw into Sully Hall Moors. Yeah, and Lou Wilkinson saying, and he slaps his thigh in frustration that there was a ball back to him there. But 
Dan Moss there turned, trying to make something happen, I think, and it was just over hitting out for a solid hell throw. Which they've taken down this left hand side. Dan Moss excellently met it with Ed, and Amund is through on this right hand side. That could be a decisive moment. He's flicks it inside, Come, tried to keep it down, but it's been passed all the way back to Tommy Simkin. So frustrating. Cool bowing out. A lot of space in this right hand side. He's played it into the middle. Potential strike. It's been cleared in the end. Oh. Another fantastic piece of defending by the visitors. Uh, great work there by uh, Scott Cuthbert, intercepting the clearance straight through to Ricky Corboa, who then ball across, no one there to receive it or struggling to receive it, but Solihull grateful, I think, to get, put it out for a corner. We'll update our BBC Radio Sorry listeners in just a moment. Casey now stands over this corner. Can Woking get back into this game? Casey whips it in. It's gone towards the back stick. Is it a little bit too deep? Akinola trying to get it back into the mixer. Oyeleki there to meet it. He's headed it down. It's been headed back out by Solihull Moors. Cuthbert now on the edge of the box, trying to find that decisive pass. It's back out to Akinola. Akinola, a long ball down to the right-hand side. Can Casey meet it? Casey's been nudged. It's a potential penalty. The referee waves away his hand. He hasn't agreed with that. Casey was potentially pushing the back. And that is half-time. It's ended. 1-0 to Solihull Moors in this first half of the, the Lathwaite Stadium. That is literally just blown for half-time here, George, at the Lathway Stadium. Unfortunately for Woking, though, they do go into the first half trailing by a goal. It was Josh Kelly that opened the scoring earlier on, a really composed finish under Will Jaskielainen in to open the scoring. And since then on, George, this has been an extremely frustrating half for Darren Saar's home side. They've had a few chances, a few little passes that have chinked through this very organised Sully Hormoz defence. The first real one, of course, was that penalty early on. Corboa taken down in the box in the end though it wasn't a decent strike from uh, from Amund uh, it was a well Tommy Simkin matched it with a save and he tipped it over the crossbar much to Darren Sars frustration who threw his water bottle to the ground Woking have had plenty of other chances earlier on and just as just before you joined us just before the half-time whistle was blown Josh Casey captain for Woking side today was potentially brought down in the Sully Horn Wars box the referee Waved it off, though, and didn't give it to the home side on that occasion. However, Woking seemed to have the momentum for this last 20 minutes or so, and potentially, if they can bring that into the second half, could see a goal against the Sully Hall Moore side. However, at the moment, they do trail to a very, very organised visiting team. It is 1-0 to Sully Hall Moors versus Woking at the moment.
Well, we're back for this second half of Woking versus Solihull Moors in the National League. The score at the moment is 1-0 to the visitors. Josh Kelly scoring his fourth goal of the season and slotting it under Will Yaskin-Lyman in a one-on-one -on -one chance. Woking went on to miss a penalty later on through Parik Amund. They then had plenty of chances. Corboa breaking down, or doing his best to break down this Solihull Moors defence, but it has been extremely organised under this September heat, Ian. It has, it has. It's been, uh, yeah, no, uh, Solihull have defended in a very organised fashion, defended well. Just noticed that uh, substitution of Woking with uh, Jermaine Anderson coming on to replace Jim Kellerman, um, who may be carrying a little bit of a knock, I don't know, but uh, certainly uh, it'll be interesting to see Kellerman, uh, Anderson and Oyelaki together in the centre of midfield. Obviously, Rowan Ince missing, Matt Robinson on the bench, and uh, and then the Kellerman coming off at half time. So, uh, what do you think was the message from Darren Sale at half time? Because are working have had their chances. I well, I think in, you know I'm looking as well at the comments and things. In in some ways, saying Woking have edged that half really, mm. but uh, it was just that one goal, and then struggling to up front in that final third to make it to make it count it's just the case of pu keep pushing for this home side here today at the Lathwaite Stadium players now underway for the second half obviously for Woking yeah. big miss is uh, Greg Cox and mm -hmm. Reese Brown uh, you know two primary alongside Porrick Hammond the, the long you know primary sort of uh, attacking players mm. and they they you know they're missing and uh, considering they are missing as well they've created a lot of strong chances but Solihull Moors have it now on this right wing Oyelecki trying to close down his man he's fallen over it's gone back out for a throw there's a little bit of a and he's tussle won there Oyelecki won the throw there good he's looked very composed on the ball very good on the ball you can tell he's got league experience and uh, didn't overcommit. shattered his man and uh, then won the throw Casey with won the throw the kick. now it's thrown forward into the middle. Tried to reach Amund, but it's headed back. Oyelaki over to Amund. Maybe a clash of heads there, but it, regardless, Casey will take the throw in for Woking. Can Woking change things around? Zach Bradshaw now on our side. He made a couple of chances in that first half. Casey now. Long throw forward down the wing. Headed back into the middle. Akinola's there to meet it. He's put it there back to Dan. Moss, he's found, he's found Akinola now. J Jermaine Anderson, my mistake. Anderson, he's played it out wide to Moss. Moss back to Anderson. It's actually gone to Corboa. That's a nice move there, Corboa, darting into the centre, eyeing up a shot, but he's played it down to Casey on this hand side. Promising from Woking at the moment. Casey, trying to eye up his option. Darren Sol screaming to go down the wing. He's tucked it inside instead to Bradshaw. Bradshaw, cross it into the back stoke. It could be met by Woking head, but it's gone just that out for a goal kick to Sully Moores. Jermaine Anderson claiming Solihull Moore's got a touch on that. Dribbled out for I think for that a was ambitious. Kick. I think it, it was a good move. Good ball in, and uh, Anderson got his head to it, but I don't think he caught anyone else. But you see what Jam Jermaine Anderson brings. Whenever he gets the ball, he's sort of twisting and turning and looking to play it forward, which I always like. I mean, it doesn't always come off, and he gets a bit of stick for it, but if he comes, you know, but he's looking to make something happen. We will update our BBC Radio Surrey and Sussex listeners in just a moment. Solihull Moors have a throw in with Clark just on the halfway line, just in front of Woking manager Darren Sale. And it's gone all the way down to Cuthbert. Cuthbert sees it out for a goal kick to Woking. Need a little bit more of that momentum than they just had. A good start to this second half. Eskalainen to Wilkinson. Wilkinson, long ball forward, Amund meets it overhead, flicks it onto Bradshaw, Bradshaw trying to reach it on this left hand side, it's kicked back down towards Casey, Casey just on the halfway line, Cuthbert now sprays it down the left wing, Bradshaw tries to flick it on but it's dealt with by Clark in the end, it's a throw in for Woking, Darren Sarr calling for energy, Casey with the throw in, halfway into the uh, Solihill Moors half, Corboa now, Shielding off the ball, doing well, turning over to Casey. Casey, can he get the ball into the box? Bradshaw on the edge of the box now. 
back down to Casey. Casey to Corboa. It's kicked it back out in the end. Dealt with nicely by Sally Moores. That rigid defence kicking in again. Casey has the throw in on the left hand wing. He's tried to get it to Akinola. He has done. Akinola composing the ball, looking for the one two with Casey. He hasn't quite pulled it off and it's sprayed all the way back down to Jeskalainen. Woking having the stronger chances in this opening second half at the moment. Over to Ammond. Ammond has brought it, Bradshaw's brought it down. He's on the edge of the box now. Can he find some space? Can he even get a shot and go? And he's gone for it. And it's go eventually glance over the bars. Good that he had the yeah. confidence, but out of the stadium in the end, Ian. Yeah, good work. Darren Sol applauding there. Woking uh, quite direct. Jeskalainen and came to Bradshaw, took a shot. He came to Woking as a lone central defender, so that was probably a central defender's shot. But it's... Uh, but good, and you feel this may well be the pattern for this half, that Woking are going to press and Solihull are going to trust their defence, and if they hold out, all well and good, but it's... Uh... There's three strong chances already now, as Casey looks to recover the ball down by his corner flag of the Woking half. He's cleared it forward. Solihull Moores, though, have it on the edge of the box. It's cleared well in the end by Oyelaki. Bradshaw meets it with a header. It's gone back out for a throw-in for... Woking now, Andy Wing not giving the ball to Casey. A little bit of action there in the dugout. Yeah, He's thrown it into Corboa though. Corboa tries to dart past one. Sully Moore's seen it out for a throw in though. What was going on down there, Ian? That was, that was never out. The throw, throw given against Corboa there. It was in, it was on the line, and uh, and then it went to a solid held player, but the uh, linesman gave it another way. But uh, everyone up in arms about that. But. Uh, these, work, these working fans it hasn't quite gone their way just yet. However, we still have 40 minutes left for this second half. Still plenty of chances as Corbeau brings it down. Nice, does well to try and turn it. He's potentially been brought down there. And Sully Moores have possession with Clark now. Simkin. Simkin sprays it forward into the centre. Wilkinson headers back. Tries to find Corbeau on the left wing. Corbeau here pressed the ball. I don't know if he'll make it though. It's eventually found its way back to Simkin. He sprayed long. Wilkinson makes it with a header again. Cuthbert does well to meet it. Let's put it out for a throw in for the opposition with James Clark. James Clark looking for an option now for the visitors. You're listening to BBC Radio. Sorry's match day commentary for Woking versus Sully Hormores. The current score is 1 0 to the visitors. as the opposition have another throw in further up this right hand side now with James Clark. Mafuta now, he's picked up the ball, a little bit of space but Ammon's done well to meet him. Akinola, excellent well, can Woking play the advantage here with the counter, they've got it down to Dan Moss. On the right hand side, he's just pressed into this Sully Hall half, he continues to press down the wing, he plays it inside and it's gone to no one in the end, a huge wasted opportunity Ian. Yeah, and uh, everyone, everyone's eyes on the referee there, whether the kick was being being taken, but Amund on the ball now. Amund, down to Dan Moss, Dan Moss, to Akinola, back to Dan Moss. Wilkinson, Dan Moss now. Here comes Akinola, he's returned it to Dan Moss, chance to get the ball in the box. It's been blocked by the Sully Hormores defender, cleared back out to Wilkinson. Woking have the momentum at the moment. Can they press on against this strong, organised defence in Sully Hall Moore? Still unbeaten in the National League so far. We will update our BBC Radio Sorry listeners very soon. Cuthbert now. Wilkinson. Long ball forward down the left channel. Ammons trying to reach it, but James Clark's done well to header it back. Here comes Corboa. Holding onto the ball nicely. Arms all over the man. He's screamed for a free kick. Woking fans not happy either. Dan Moss now. Oh, you're lucky. Jermaine Anderson. Here comes Casey. He whips it into the back stick. Jermaine Anderson potentially meeting with a header. It's been headed in. Amund is free. A lot of space. He strikes yeah! it into goal. Full Woking brought it down excellently by Amund. There's no flag from the linesman. And it is 1 1 here at the Laithwaite Stadium. Fantastic for Darren Sowell's side. Amund did superbly well. Great composure there, Ian. Yeah, really, really good. And. Uh, 
a powerful header. I think it was Jermaine Anderson coming in, but powerful header fell to Porak Hammond and the, he took his time, hit it home, no no messing, and fully deserved for that pressure in the first uh, first 15 minutes of this half. And uh, it's been all woking, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how Solihull respond, whether they now come out a little bit more, because they've been defending quite deep trusting on their defensive uh, organization to sort of handle it and and there it was opened up and it's just been waiting for that and so now for, for fans it's game on and the agony is no more the chance are now coming out from the Woking fans they're straight back into this game it is game on indeed they've had 11 players at some time sitting behind the ball Ian, and now this game could be flipped on his head. If Woken keep on keep up this momentum, they could have themselves Certainly. ahead. James Osborne now with Solihull Moors. He's flicked it through though. They've got a chance up the other end. He shoots and it's hit the post. A huge chance for Solihull Moors. Cuthbert now though, trying to get it clear. He's played it back to Casey. Casey clears. What an opportunity for Solihull Moors to put themselves ahead right away again. Corboa twisting a turn in the centre of the pitch. Dan Moss now. Woking being jeered on up the pitch. Bradshaw in heaps of space at the far post. A ball flies into Amund. Amund now through. He's been brought down potentially. The referee waves it off though. Simkin has the ball back for Sully Hall Moores. The referee is absolutely having none of it. There's a ball forward from Jermaine Anderson. Patrick Amund nearly getting Parrick Amund nearly getting on the end of it. He was essentially brought down by that Sully Hall Moores defender, but in the end, it was a no from the referee. Woking certainly back on top of this game already. It's a poor ball down to Josh Kelly. Casey has a throw in. What was interesting before that was the solid hull attack, really, that from nowhere suddenly they're back on the front foot and hit the post, and uh, you suddenly realise, wow, they, you know, they, the game can change either way. And, what what, uh, and what then, a second half we're having. Uh, uh, no, it's, it's been a great start, great start. Superb. Hammond trying to flick it onto Corboa. That's been met, though, well. Hammond getting it through to Corboa one more. He's trying to flick it off to J. Mayne Anderson. Simkin has it again for Sully Hall Moores. Simkin, long ball forward. He's been met with a lot of cheers from those Woking fans behind Simkin, though. They're, they're piling on the pressure. Well done from Dan Moss to get in the challenge on this right hand side. That's met with huge applause from the Woking fans. Oyeleki to Hammond. Now to Dan Moss. Dan Moss. Does well to stay on the ball. Good composure. Jermaine Anderson now. It's with, it's with Wilkinson. He's looking for an option. He's sprayed it down to Casey. It's a backwards pass. He might not make it. He has in the end. Not quite the pass that Woking were looking for, but they've got it with Casey just past, by the halfway line on the left side. Cuthbert now. Casey's making that darting one on the left wing. Cuthbert ignores it. Goes to Wilkinson instead. Wilkinson, he plays the long ball forward. Can Ammon meet it? Ammon tries to flick it onto Casey, and it's been seen out in the end for a goal kick to Sully Hall Moores. Wow, this is a anything quite, goes it, game now. It, it, it could go either way, it's really. Quite the and, second uh, half. But Woking, you have to say, in the first half, even though they were 1 0 down, and in the second half, regardless of the hit post, have been on top. Well, they've continued that momentum, haven't they? They've brought it right back into them as the second half. Yeah. It, it must have been a stay as you are, keep pushing message from Down Sahl. And it's got the Lathwaite Stadium rocking as well. They're right behind their team. This could easily be turned on the head. It's a, remi a reminder as well Sully Hall Moors won every single away game that they played this season as well. Yeah. And the only side unbeaten in the National League. Yeah, no, they, they've started very well. And very surprisingly, really, they two years ago, they were brilliant. They they And they were, last year, they were my favourites for promotion, believe it or not, and uh, really underachieved, and it never happened. But, uh, but they've uh, started this season very, very well. Very well, indeed. Osborne on the ball now for those visitors. He sprays it down to the right wing, a cross comes in, can it be met? And it has been, but it's been glanced way too far left of the Woking goal. And Will Jeskalainen will resume with a goal kick. We'll be giving our live updates for BBC Radio. Sorry, listeners, as well, too. Got a man down at the moment. Man down for Woking. Trying to, trying to figure out who it is. Can you see him? Um, Good moment for a drinks break, though. 
regardless. <laughs> it's Oyeleki <laughs> down Oyeleki. for Woking at the moment. That's not a good sign, is it? Is it Oyeleki? Return from, from training, for, from injury. No, it's not Oyeleki. It's... I'm just having a look here. There's a... It's a Num number 18. That seems to be a mistake on the on the on the team oh, well, sheet it, that we're looking at. If it if it's number 18, I'm looking at my team sheet, which is <laughs> I've got Oyelaki at 21. But I'm looking up and down it. Yeah, it probably is Oyelaki. Regardless, these teams are taking these chances to to get their refreshments and getting the wet towels on their foreheads because the weather is absolutely scorching at the Lathwaite Stadium. It is 1-1, 60th minute here. You're listening to BBC Radio. Sorry, it's National League commentary. I just want to add here that this isn't our mistake. It's the it's the team sheets we've had that oh, have got not, no. Emmanuel Oilecki at 21, <laughs> and uh, his 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 number starts with a one. Anyway, regardless, hopefully he will recover soon. Regardless. And all the players taking a lot of fluid, and Darren Sahl saying a lot to his team. Definitely having strong words there with Casey. We will update our BBC Radio Sorry listeners in just a moment. Elsewhere, whilst we have this drinks break. elsewhere at the moment. Nil-nil between Oldham and Dorking. Nil-nil between the Aldershot and AFC Flyde. Crawley Town are leading 2-1 against Newport County in League 2. Adam Campbell, the goal scorer. Half an hour left. Still plenty of time to Woking to get ahead, to get this Lathwaite Stadium rocking once again. It's a, looks like a substitution for working. Yeah, Matt update, Robinson, RBC I think. Radio. Sorry. Well, I'm delighted to tell you, Cameron, that they are, they finally had their goal in the end. It was Parik Amund that chested the ball down superbly with a nice composed finish and then almost half volleyed, scissor kicks it home through much to the jubilation of the Lathwaite Stadium. So, yes, it is now 1-1. They have that goal. They pushed through from the, from the end of the first half with that huge momentum. They pushed through into the second half. They had about three or four chances. They were unlucky towards the beginning of this second period, but in the end, it was Amund who got that equaliser. He then came up the pitch again. He almost doubled the scoring, and that is the problem for Sully Hall-Moores at the moment. Woking have this superb momentum just after the drinks break here, because, by the way, it is boiling. But they have this superb momentum that they're really pushing onto Sully Hall Moors at the moment and they're coming forward with a nice header it's been brought down it's into the area but it's been cleared in the end but it is 1-1 with half an hour to go here at the Lathwaite Stadium Cameron Casey it's been brought down tries to whip towards the back post but it's no one there to meet it just yet Matt Robinson now on the pitch there yeah yeah Robinson coming from Moy Lakey and uh, Matt Robinson's first touch over hit but Not uh Oh, you're lucky. Good pressure from Woking. Oh, you're lucky just coming back from injury. A smart substitution, would you say, from Darren Sol? Trying to preserve yes, his Yes, whether he's picked up an injury or whether it's simply... I mean, I, I was a little bit surprised he came out for the second half. I thought, in this heat, I thought he might well just do one half and yeah. then change with Anderson, who's also coming back from injury. But, uh, yeah, he went down there and uh, Robinson has played every other game this season, I think. Yes, he has. He has played every single game so far there's a long header forward now Corvall will chase it and calmly pass back to Simkin though huge cheers every time Simkin's in the ball this late late stadium trying to put off Simkin in goal for, for Sully Hall Moores Ammon's trying to reach it it's picked up by Jermaine Anderson in the end he's got Dan Moss overlapping he's trying to sprint down this right wing can he create something for the home side can Woking get ahead in this game they were behind for so long but can they flip it on their head it's gone back to Wilkinson Luke Wilkinson looking for a ball forward. He's tried to reach Corboa, headed away by James Clark. Bradshaw, back to Cuthbert. Good play by Bradshaw there, lovely touch. Superb. Casey, almost losing out, trying to calm things down. Sully Hall Moores, potentially an attack through the middle, but it's been cleared. Headed back into the middle. Bradshaw, headed straight back again. Corboa now, trying to chest it down. Amund. Akinola will try to meet it. It's a poor pass from Sully Hall Moores forward. Jaskalainen back on the ball. So half an hour against the team. They're unbeaten in the National League season. They've had much more of the better chances in this second half. It does look like it could be going Woking's way at the moment, and it would be a huge result for Darren Sahl's side. 
This would bring them to three games unbeaten. It would bring them to ten points from their last four games. A huge feat at the moment. Zach Bradshaw now. James Clark, though, meeting him. He's been brought down. It's a free kick to Sally Hall Moores just outside their penalty area. You're listening to BBC Radio, sorry. 1-1 one, one at the moment. Josh Kelly opening the scoring in the first half. That was then met by Parik Amundo. A huge equaliser for Darren South's side. He wants more, though. He's shouting at Corbo. He wants more from him. He wants Woking to take this game. Cuthbert headers it back now. Robinson trying to meet with a header. He doesn't reach it. Sally Hall Moores now, Ian. Would you say that potentially their attacks aren't looking too promising? There's a couple of balls that have just dwindled out. No. But Corboa has a chance doing the right hand side. A long kick forward. He's cut inside with composure, but he's lost Brilliant the ball. Play. Really nice ball forward from Will Yaskalainen yeah. all the way through to Corboa. But it ends in a in a, a goal kick now. Well, a corner actually for Sally yeah. Moores. Yeah, Corboa did really well there. It was a long ball from Yaskalainen. Corboa against the defender. One on one, went to cut inside, well defended by the defender, but giving away the corner. But yeah, Corboa, a handful there. Whenever he hasn't seen much of the ball, but whenever he has, he's a bit of a handful. His his pace has been hugely threatening to the Sully Hall Moore side. Casey standing out over this corner, this right hand corner now. He's looking for an option. Can Woking take the lead? It'll be whipped in by Casey, right hand in the air. Cuthbert making some movements, it's whipped in, can it be met by a header? And it almost dribbles through in the end, no one can meet it, and it's out for a goal kick to Sully Hall Moores. No, corner, Simkin, corner again, I have to interrupt you, corner again. It was well well defended by Sully Hall, but they, they panicked a little bit and pushed it out. Woking, certainly on the front foot at the moment. Can they capitalise on this consecutive corner? It'd be Matt Robertson with the delivery. Ammons at the front post. I've got plenty of options at the back stick. He's taking his time. Woking fans feel that Corbeau is being handled in the box. It's been whipped in towards the back stick. Can it be met? Cuthbert's there, but it's headed out by Sully Holmores. Casey meets it on the edge of the box. It's down to Matt Robinson now on the left-hand channel. He tries to play it into Ammon. They're calling for a... It's, it's a counter now for Sully Holmores. He sprayed it out, but it's, it hasn't reached Ben, and it's a throw-in for Woking. Quite the moment there for for Woking in. Yeah, no, that was a uh, very good pressure from Woking and uh, just couldn't make it count. But uh, certainly they're on the front foot at the moment. Matt Robinson back to Casey. Can they find a way back into this battle ahead for the first time in this game? There's 24 minutes left on the clock. Darren Sahl hurriedly get it to Casey for the throw and Casey throws it forward to Corboa. Tries to get it down to Matt Robinson. He comes in with a potential foul on the Sully Hall Morse player there. But in the end, it's gone out for a throw in to the opposition. The Laithwaite Stadium rocking now at the moment. They're getting behind this team. They want this winning goal. Still plenty of time for that as well. James Clark throws it down the right hand channel. Cuthbert boots it forward into the centre of the pitch. Ah. Jamie, Jermaine Anderson trying to meet it. Cuthbert has then headed it out for a throw in just by the dugout here on the right hand side. James Clark. Try to get it forward to Sully Hall Moores. Their attack's not looking too promising at the moment. He had that great moment of composure in the first half to open the scoring, but it hasn't really fallen their way since then. Futa now. Nice composure to Jamie Osborne. He brings it out to Clark on the right-hand side. He stays calm. Back to Morrison in defence for the visitors. Morrison. It's a strange-looking pass down to his left back, and it hasn't reached him whatsoever. Woking fans enjoyed that one. Woking want to go quickly, but the referees denied it for some reason. He hasn't allowed them to let them have that throw-in, potentially giving them a counter-attack. I'm not quite sure what the reason is. I think it's for a substitution for Sully Hall Moores. Yeah, that was... Uh, but it shows that Woking are on the front foot. The exactly. moment they get a throw, they, they want to take it as quickly as possible, and... That's just what Dan Moss did, but the referee, there was obviously a substitution coming. Otherwise, you know, working play could have been away there. Just a moment ago, you can tell that they're on the front foot. I mean, Darwin Sarr was getting the ball to take the throw in as quickly as he could, trying it, to get that ball moving again. Yeah, it's often like, he, it's his mindset really is front foot, positive, quick. And uh, when you've got when you've got your foot, your front foot forward, make it count, and that's what he's trying to do there. I, 
I don't think I've ever really seen Darren Saul, a Darren Saul team really go into defensive mode in that sense. No, they want this game. They're hungry for this winning goal. It's 1-1 at the moment. We've got about 20 minutes. You're listening to BBC Radio. Sorry, as Casey flies down the left wing. Casey cuts it back to Robinson. Over to Cuthbert now. Salihamor Moore's only really one man pressing. Maybe they're holding out for this, this draw. They're still unbeaten in the National League this season. They've got about five, six defenders back right now in their back line. Jermaine Anderson holding onto the ball in the right wing. Can he turn his man? Can he put it through to, to Akinola? Not quite. Solihull Moors with a chance to counter now. Plenty of Woking men back though, and it's cut out by Wilkinson. Now down to Jack Stevens. Jamie Osborne now into the centre of the pitch. Pressing in down the left-hand side of this Woking half. He's turning. Done well to keep a hold of the ball. But it's Akinola that's come in, and Corboa has a chance to spin away. He's charging down on this Solihull Moors defence. Plenty of options in front of him. Can Robinson reach the loose pass? Not quite. Salihul Moors all the way back to Simkin and he sprays it forward but the pressure certainly seems on the away side Cuthbert headed it down to Robinson Robinson flicks it back to Casey nicely done Casey to Cuthbert he's seen plenty of the ball it's a long forward long ball forward to Amund done well to keep it down very very well indeed he's tried to flick it onto Robinson and Robinson hasn't made the overlap yeah, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't reading that really it's uh, Creative touch from Ammon, but uh, players aren't always mind readers. And I think we've got a liquid break, which looking at some of the players out there, they really need it's this, both sides. It's the second of the second half now. I mean, it's, uh, it, if you weren't aware, if you were sitting in a nicely air-conned room, it is absolutely scorching here at the, at the Lathwaite Stadium. Um, we're struggling commentating on the match, so God knows what the players are doing. And we're in the uh, shade. No, exactly. We're, we're not in direct sun either. No. It's just hot, but it's uh, I, I don't know why. I look coming over, it's 32, 33, that sort of temperature. It's, it is unprecedented conditions regardless. Woking, they're hungry for this game. They're chasing it. They've certainly got the momentum, and they have done for this whole of the second half. Arguably have dominated this game against Solihull Moors. About 20 minutes left of this match. 1-1 at the moment. You're listening to BBC Radio Surrey. Matchday commentary. National League action. Woking 1. Solihull Moors 1. It was Parak Amund. Woking's number 10 that got that equaliser in the second half. Nicely composed, chested the ball down in the box and volleyed at home in the end. That was that was about half an hour after Josh Kelly, well, 40 minutes after Josh Kelly opened the scoring for the visitors. Have a nicely composed run. We're in our drinks break now, even the officials are getting in on the act. They're they're desperate for it. Well good for them, they deserve <laughs> it really. Darren Sale getting in as much words as he can to his team. He's using these these breaks to his advantage. We will update our BBC Radio Surrey listeners in just a moment. We'll update you on the elsewhere scores now. Crawley Town 3-1 against Newport County at the moment in League 2. In the National League, Aldershot have taken the lead away to AFC Flyde. 1-0 now. Still 0-0 though between Oldham and Dorking. Looking to get back underway here after this drinks break here at the Lathwaite Stadium. Both players getting but so players getting back into formation as Simkin looks to take the goal kick for Solihull Moors. Cuthbert looking to keep a high line for his home side. Parrick Amund trying to keep the ball in play. It's come down for a throw in here. James Clark will most likely take it into the defensive third of the of the Solihull Moors half. The ball thrown forward. Down the right wing. It's tried to be flicked on but Cuthbert's dealt with it well. Corbeau is looking to reach that. It's been cleared back over to Dan Moss.
Well, at the moment, George, there hasn't been any goals since my last update. It is still one between Woking and Sully Moors, but it is once again been all Woking for the majority of this second half as well. We've just had a jinx break because, well, the conditions are quite, quite frankly, unprecedented. It is boiling at the moment. Everyone needs to be getting the fluids in, but Woking have had some very, very strong chances at the moment. A couple of balls sprayed into the back post. They qu weren't quite able to, to reach it. There was a moment when they had consecutive headers. Sully Moors do have the ball on the on the left-hand wing of the Woking defensive third, though. They've sprayed into the middle. It's well dealt by Bradshaw in the end. But, but coming back to those consecutive corners, though, there was a really strong moment where Woking, you know, they could have opened, they could have put themselves actually ahead. It's been kind of the issue for Sully Moors, trying to deal with the, the press and the pressure that Woking have at the moment. They're very, very confident as Matt Robertson has it on this left-hand side. But Sully Moors, one of the best defences in the league, still unbeaten in the National League this season. But we're in for an absolute thriller over the last 20 minutes as Parik Ammons keeps the ball in play on this left-hand side. For now, though, George, it is 1-1 at the Lathwaite Stadium between Woking and Sully Hill Moors. It's coming, it's coming oh! to the middle, just over the bar. Huge chance, you join us back for the commentary. Ian, keep yourself to date with that. I just Sorry. missed it. Sorry, lost it a bit there, but <laughs> great, great chance. Great work by Woking. Ball, ball came in. I think it was, was it Anderson who had the chance? Jermaine yeah, Anderson. Jermaine Anderson chance from about seven or eight yards. And, uh, you know, it's well worked and uh, just over the bar. And uh, the fans, Darren Sahl, everyone just uh, head hands on. Hands. Yeah, but head again, it's woking pressure. Plenty of more. They're build on this. They're building these chances. They're slowly breaking down this strong defence of Sully Hall Moors. Cool Boa trying to meet it in the middle. It's headed down though. Matt Robinson's done well to get the ball back for... Woking, Akinola, back to Moss. Sprayed over to Parakamon, but James Clark's matched it for the visitors. It's back to Simkin. Really was a huge chance there. We just yeah. basically missed it in the interval between our updates for the for BBC Radio, sorry, in the commentary. Yeah, just Do waiting for, for the net to bulge there, really. Throw in for Sally Moores. It's come back to James Clark on the right side. Morrison now. Sitting again, trying to stop the press from Corboa. They've got it with their left back now. Come in side to Osborne. Osborne skipped away nicely, the captain for the visitors today. He's got an option to his right. He's turned away nicely, though. He's on the left-hand side. Sally Moore still on the ball. Woking need to win the ball back, and they have done. Matt Robinson on the right-hand side. Can he chase that down? It's done really, really nice pressure there from Matt Robinson. Yeah. Won the ball back, seen it out for a throw in. Working hard, it just couldn't get on the end of the rebound and eventually it went out for a, a solid hell throw. It's been a strong substitution for, for Woking since he's come on. He's, he's kind of added that, that bit of energy there in these extreme conditions. It is extremely hot. We do have about 14 minutes left of this match between Woking and Sully Hill Moors. Oh. It's 1-1 at the moment. Poor pass to Matt Robinson there. Sully Hill Moors can attack down this, this right wing. They've turned back though, not really taking that opportunity, not enough options for them. Jamie Osborne now, in the middle. Sprayed down, and it's gone out for a throw in. Woking will take those all day long. Yeah, and Clark for Solihull puts his hands to his head and, head and uh, looks like another Solihull substitution here. Mark Beck coming on for Josh Kelly now. Josh Kelly, the goal scorer earlier on, did very well to open the scoring for the visitors. A great finish, a great run. He's now off. Beck, who looks like an extremely physical forward, potentially what Solihull need. They need that long ball forward. They need to bring it down and get everything they can. Yeah, whatever you, they can actually throw You don't want to go by stereotypes or appearances, but he's big. He's mm. number nine. Exactly. He trots out. He's probably... He's taller than uh, Wilkinson and uh, Cuthbert, so uh, you imagine that Solihull will go a little bit more direct. In, indeed. Dan Moss, a great challenge to see it out there. Standing strong. Got about 12 minutes until added time. 1-1 between Woking and Solihull Moors. Parik Ammond getting that equaliser for Darren Sale's side. So throw in for Solihull Moors. Down the left side. Bradshaw, Robinson brought it down 
to Bradshaw. Casey needs to defend well against J-Ben. J-Ben cuts inside. It's a nice fit in from, from Casey. It's not enough, though. It's on the edge of the box as Moores. Now Woking can attack now. corboa has got it in the middle of the pitch. He's done well to get round Morrison, but he's been brought down on the halfway line. And the referee reaches for his yeah. back pocket. That is a yellow card for Morrison. Definitely a yellow card. And again, it was a good break from Woking there. Ball to Corboa, twisted and turned. Brought down, referee, no no hesitation, right decision. And Corbo has been so good at that today. He gets the ball in the half turn, he spins around and he creates those chances. He's got very quick feet. Mm. He, you know, as soon as the ball comes to him, he's sort of twisting and turning, his feet are going everywhere. And uh, as we've been saying, he does. he's done very well since he came in to start for Woking. Done extremely well. Could be a, a quite strong chance here for Woking. Yaskulainen has a free kick on the halfway line. Plenty of options at the back stick. Can they get ahead on this? Can they get ahead in this game? Looks like they want to put it towards that far post. And it has done. Sprayed all the way back. Cuthbert's there. It's sprayed all the way down. Through to in. Ammon's there. It couldn't dribble through, though. It's gone out for a goal kick. A man's down for Solihull Moors. I think it's gone out for a corner, actually. It seems like it. Those Woking players still sticking by the opposition goal. Play continues. This momentum for Woking continues. Casey will stand over the, the corner kick. Robinson's on the edge of the box as an option. So is Jermaine Anderson. Can Woking finally take advantage of one of these corners? They've had so many this game. Casey, can he find a head? Can it be met? Right arm up. Who's he looking for? It's crossed into the box. Into the middle. A player goes down. It's been cleared, though. And in the end, it's a foul on the Sully Moors man. Not quite the corner working we're looking for. I have to say both sets of players have done brilliantly given the heat. I mean the yeah the game is still playing at quite a quite a decent pace and a uh, lot of energy being expended and you wouldn't you know sometimes you look in these temperatures at games overseas and it's just passed around at the back and everyone looks as though they can't be bothered but it's. Uh, the commitment from both sides has been excellent. They've gone for this. They, re they, they really have. Um, and and Solihull Moors, they've stuck true to their, their reputation this season of having a very strong defence. They've held out Woking for multiple chances. It's been met there well by Beck. Almost dribbled through in the end to Jack Stevens. But Will Yaskalainen, a quick ball forward over to Corboa. Can he meet it on the right wing? Chance for Woking here. He's on the right-hand side of the box. He's got options in the middle. He cuts inside. Can he shoot with his left foot? And it's just gone past. Well, nearly out for a corner. Massive chance for Woking. In the end, though, a disappointing shot on his potentially weaker left foot. It looks it anyway, Ian. Yeah. It, it, I mean, if it got in, it would have been brilliant. It was a great quick kick from Will Yaskalainen and... Uh, Corbo was away, cut inside, players in the box, and he let fly, and, and fair play to him. That's probably what you're told to do, but it, it didn't really threaten the goal. Not quite, as Simkin prepares to take another goal kick for the opposition. Woking haven't been able to get that clean sheet, but they will go another game unbeaten today. Matt Robinson meets the header. Ammond trying to get on the end of that on the left wing. James Clark does well, though, to keep that ball for the opposi opposition. Flicked on to Beck. Cuthbert's there to meet it, though, in the centre. Jermaine Anderson tries to flick it on to Robinson. James Clark with a long ball forward now to the right wing. Jack Stevens will chase. Cuthbert, though, headed it on. Casey's tried to meet it, and Cuthbert's cleared it into the centre of the pitch. Ammond with the flick on. James Clark there again to meet it. Both teams really going for this now. Ian, in this extreme heat, Corboa outstrength by Morrison in the end. Back to Sam, uh, Simkin. Yeah, pretty it, lot of physical commitment now. Both these teams want it. Can they snatch the winner? Can Woking snatch a hugely important win? They could grab 10 points from their last four games. This could be huge for Darren Sarr's side. We're just about seven and a half minutes away from added time now. Woking won. Sally Hall Moores won. In this National League commentary for BBC Radio, sorry. And that'll be another, another drinks break by the looks of it. It's the well, Ricky, Cor Ricky Corbeau has gone down injured. I, I can't see the... No, they're saying to the physio to stay, but I, I suspect there was an element of strategic, just all the players need a break. They're doing brilliantly. Well, well, the fourth official is actually urging the players to get back on the pitch. So is the referee. He's not having any of it. He wants he wants this game back underway. Darren Sell is doing his best to, to get some words into Cuthbert there, but 
both sides are desperate for a drink. Look at them. It's, it's, it's the referee, though, that's marching over to both sets of players. He wants them back out on this pitch. And they will do. We've got about six minutes left. Can Woking find that winning goal? Both sets of players looked absolutely exhausted. They're still going for it. Corbeau is down again. The physio's back on the pitch. Is that potentially a tactical play there, Ian? Does he want the drinks break for his well, side? No, I think, I think the tactical play would have been two minutes ago. I think now yeah. it's... Uh, it's a little bit more worrying from Woking perspective. I'm just looking at the the bench. We've got uh, Nana Boateng, uh, Robbie Wilmot, the two attacking substitutions that could still be made. Yeah, and considering the influence that Kaboa has had on this game so far, it would be quite a huge loss in these last minutes not to have him available. Well, it would, without having Reese Brown. Uh, oh, it looks like it's just cramp. He's having his... Uh, physio treatment bit at the of, moment bit the of stretch but without having uh, Reese Gregor Cox and uh, Reese Brown available really Ricky Corboa has been the attacking threat alongside Porrick Hammond and uh, he's uh, he's done very well the last few games if Reese Brown and Reese Gregor Cox were in this starting 11 today if they were available what are you thinking the score is right now do you think it would have been a completely different game they're that attacking five out because look how far they've got with I those think, players out I think uh, Reese Brown Started, started the season quite slowly and was ironically looking very good when he picked up his injury. Uh, Reese Gregor Cox has started the season really strongly, got a look, quite a few goals, and uh, now it looks like Nana Boateng is coming on for Ricky Kulboa. Nana and Boateng. He's, a, he's a handful. Number 15 for Woking. Can he be the difference in these last five minutes? We will update our BBC Radio, sorry listeners, for a final time before full time very soon. 1 1 at the Lake White Stadium. It's been it's a throw-in for Sully Hall Moores to resume play. There will be at least five minutes added on for foot at the 90. James Clark throws it back to Simkin. Simkin. Nana Boateng chases down the ball. I'm going for it's eight or nine minutes eight. minimum added. Quite potentially. A lot of water breaks. Some players down as well. Yeah. Jamie Osborne for Sully Hall Moores. James Clark. He's seen a lot of the ball this second half. Tries to spray it into the middle. Wilkinson does well to head it back into the path of Jaskalainen. Corbeau off the pitch, but sprayed over to Nana Boateng. He's got pace to chase that ball down. Will he meet it? Will he keep it on the pitch? He has done excellently. Can he turn away from his man? Down by the right corner flag. It's back to Jermaine Anderson. Woking need to get forward, but they're not. <laughs> they look absolutely exhausted. Jermaine Anderson does well to turn his man. Over to Nana Boateng. Can he get a ball into the box? He does do. To the back stick. It's almost glanced towards goal, but Matt Robinson still chasing after it. On the left wing, though, he clatters into his man. And Jay Ben is down for a Woking free kick, much to the disgust of the Woking fans. Yeah, Ben played the game there. He did uh, what Woking fans have seen Woking players do for years. As the, as the player came in, he was, wasn't really in control, but put his leg in front, fell over and, and win the free kick. But uh, good work by Boateng. Good long ball. He was on it. Cross just headed away by Solihull. And a Boateng, an exceptional start to his, his time on the pitch this afternoon. That's a long kick, though, from Simkin. Casey... Head is it back out for a throw in for Sally Hall Moores by the looks of things. They've got three players back. They've actually got a couple of couple of men forward at the moment, Sally Hall Moores. Maybe they could nick a winner. It's down with Beck. He plays it into the middle. Jack Stevens now. Back to Beck with a strike. It's hit Cuthbert though. And the referee's blown for a free kick. Wilkinson is the one that's down. Jack Stevens getting a clip on him in the end. Gonna be updating our BBC Radio, sorry, listeners. Very soon. Elsewhere in the National League at the moment, Aldershot winning 2-0 over FC Fly. Dorking still 0-0 with Oldham. Over to Jermaine Anderson. He's got a bit of space. He chests it down nicely. Really nice control. Comes into the middle as a Nana Boateng. Boateng can't really get the ball out of his feet. He's held on to it excellently, though. Over to Dan Moss. Dan Moss. Gives it back to Akinola. Akinola to Jermaine Anderson. Over to Nana Boateng. It's a poor pass backwards, though. Sally Hall Moores can get it forward with Beck now. Cuthbert's there to meet him. Can he get a foot in? Uh, unfortunately not. It's gone back out of the throne to Sally Hall Moores. Down, down the halfway line, just inside of the Sally Hall Moores. Yeah, Boateng oh. recovered there, albeit giving away a, giving away a throw, but he uh, he worked hard there to brought some much-needed energy into this into these yeah. final moments. Still 1-1 here at the Braithwaite Stadium. 
Hicks, poor pass there. Into the middle now. Wilkinson clears it forward. Can Amund meet it? Nana Boateng, though. He wants a bit of the action. Tries to header it forward. They're calling for a foul on Nana Boateng. The Moors resume possessions, though, on the left-hand side. Well, it's still 1-1 here, George, at the Lathwaite Stadium. It's the, the agony continues for these Woking fans. They've had plenty of more chances. Corboa, who's looked excellent on the turn throughout the match, really, really doing well in attacking chances. He's just had to be brought off. He looks exhausted in the end due to this heat and potentially picking up a knock. Or it, it could have been cramp. He came off, though. Nana Boateng has looked a bit of fresh air. He came straight onto the pitch, and it was a long ball forward from Rui Askeline, and he was away on the right-hand side. He clipped it in to the far post but there was no woking that head there to meet it in the end solo homos looks like they're trying to throw a couple of bit a couple of more men forward now at the moment maybe they could grab a last minute winner but right now woking have had have absolutely dominated this second half I, by far i've looked a better team in attack but it's the organized defense of solo homos that have been keeping them out i'll update you at full time because there's been a lot of water breaks and we should be in for a cracking last five to six minutes here george but at the moment woking King one, Sully Hall Moore's one. It's James Clark now. Brings it down to Jay Ben. Ben brings it into the middle to Mafuta. Mafuta turning his man, Matt Robinson. He's looking for an option. Back out to Stevens. Stevens into Mafuta. Mafuta plays it in. It's not good enough. Cuthbert gives it to Boateng. He's trying to make something. He's being closed down in the end, but he's still on the ball. Gives it back out to Robinson. Plenty of Solihull Moors men back. Woking are struggling to get it forward. They haven't got the energy, but it's been played through to Brighting. He's offside, almost oh. turning, almost in a lot of space there. Nine minutes added on, indicated by the full official. What did we say, eight, seven or you eight? You said eight or nine. I said five or six. <laughs> right? I, was, I, I was a little bit off in the end. I think, I think they're adding a minute or two to every game just to make a point at the moment. But nine oh, yeah. minutes in this heat is... Uh, is a challenge. As much as both of these players want want the win, they want their chances. They're almost there was almost a little bit of a sigh when those nine minutes went up in the end. Casey trying to meet the header though. Potential foul there. It's a foul on the edge of the box for Sully Moores. A good opposition, a good position for the opposition. The referee leans down to spray. He's setting up the spot kick for the visitors. They've got it just on the right corner of the penalty area. Probably the most dangerous position I think Solihull have had all half. Jamie, Os Jamie Osborne steps over this, the captain for the visitors. They've got plenty of options at the back stick. He looks up, wonders who he's going to try, where he's going to play this ball. They've got a huge striker in Mark Beck at the back stick. They're number nine. They have to look out for that player, Woking. Huge chance for the visitors. Can Woking keep them up? Can they then come back with a counter? Jamie Osborne standing over the ball. Referee yet to blow his whistle. He does now, though. Here we go. It's whipped into the back stick. A header hasn't met it. It's cleared back out to the edge of the box. Mafuta's there in a lot of space. He shoots. It's blocked by Woking. Though. Woking can counter-attack. Nana Broten darts forward down the left-hand side. He's chased it. He's, he's got lucky. He's through on go, though, on this left-hand side. Nana Broten for Woking. Can he make something of this? He tries to cut it back. It's an excellent tackle in the end by Nana, by Solihull Moors. Woking going ballistic. They believe it was the Ben in the end for Solihull Moors who got a hand in there. Ian? I didn't see it well. I saw that everyone go up for the handball. I, I saw I saw the player come in to defend, and uh, it looks like Akinola has been booked for complaining. But uh, the tackle went in. Boateng did what he should do. He was trying to play it across. I think it was. Uh, I don't know who was on the far he right. He went for the unselfish option, didn't he? But yeah. we've got a corner now with Matt Robinson. Can working build on this momentum? The fans. Really seem like they can. It's whipped into the back stick. Can I head a meter? It's cleared by Beck in the end. Back out to Jane, Jermaine Anderson. Jermaine Anderson gets it down to Wilkinson. Can Wilkinson make anything of it? It's gone back out for a throw in for Woking. Really was a huge chance. Jay Ben did excellently well to get back there, regardless of whether it hit his hand or not. Yeah, he did. He did. And he, he, he slid in and covered and... Uh, no throw, no long throw, particularly for Woking today. Sam Habigam has that in his armory, but I believe has picked up an injury, not on the bench. See, it's thrown in. Jermaine Anderson, can he turn? He's in the penalty area. The Sully Moors defenders need to be careful. They have done. Matt, Matt Ross comes in, though. He's by the corner flag. They're jostling for the ball. A lot of men around there now. A lot of legs flying in, a lot of challenges. Woking are calling for a foul. Matt Ross has gone, Dan Moss has gone down in the end. He's thrown back in. 
but Matt Robinson has it for Woking. There's options on the edge of the box. He turns away, tries to play it back up to the right wing. He's wasted the opportunity. Solihull Moore is trying to get down this left-hand side of Jack Stevens now. But well, Wilkinson in the end seems to have put in quite a fair tackle. The referee's going for a free kick. Woking fans couldn't disagree more. That's really taken the sting out of that Woking counter, well, attacking blast there. Yeah, I, I thought that was, uh, if it was given as a free kick, fair enough. But it was uh, to give a yellow card to Luke Wilkinson in that. He must have said something, is, is all I can imagine. But uh, yeah. it, seem, it seemed like a fair challenge from where we were seeing. Well, it was on the other side of the pitch, though, where Simkin is now taking the free kick. He's tried to get it over to the right-hand side. It's a little bit of a weak kick, though. Cuthbert has been beaten by Beck, though. Here's James Clark. Casey does well too with the interception. And Wilkinson's there again. He's gone down. But it's Ben who whips the ball in for Sully Almore. Saws the back stick. They can't get there. That's gone too far and it's gone out for a goal kick. It is now the 95th minute in this match between Woking and Sully Moores. 1-1 at the moment. Wilkinson is down for Woking. They've had some great chances Woking in this second half. They haven't been able to take them. Can they build in this momentum? You have to say, following the goal that Sully Hill scored, it's been all Woking. It's been really all Woking the whole game, and uh, they've done well to get back to parity, missed a penalty, but uh, who knows what the last two or three minutes might bring. Well, if it's anything to judge off by the previous game, the previous minutes, Ian, we're going to be in for a cracker. Stay tuned, BBC Radio Surrey. It's 1-1 at the moment, team Woking and Sully Hall Moors. Jaskalainen sprays it forward down the left wing he's looking for Amund Amund headers it back he's tried to find Matt Robinson he's into the box now he flicks it past one and excellently cleared by James Clark in the end that is some awesome defending yeah it was good defending Robinson did well Amund did well headed it in knew what he was doing Robinson got the cut back and uh, and Solihull defended it well Dan Moss with the throw in now in his just inside the attacking third of the Holly, Sully Hall Moore half Jermaine Anderson tries to get a ball in the box the fans applaud though and it rolls out for a corner another big chance for Woking they've had plenty of these corners for the whole game can they finally get ahead on it Woking with the game in their hands four minutes three minutes left of play now 1-1 one, one at the moment can they make this corner Cuthbert's making some movement Casey taking, he's whipped it in towards the centre, Cuthbert's there and he's almost glanced it into the left hand side of the goal, it's rolled out for a, go a goal kick now from Simkin that was agonisingly close Ian very close and uh, you know all the players going in there but Cuthbert got a clear header there and probably I would guess a foot or so wide of the post but uh, again Woking pressure three minutes now, can Woking get this winning goal, Sully Hall Moores trying to hold on to this draw. They are the only unbeaten team left in the National League at the moment. They've done well to hold off these actual, an absolute bombardment of working chances. Arguably a handball there from Jay Ben for Sully Hall Moores. And Matt Robinson's trying to fight for the ball back. They're pushing. They're scrambling. Both teams going in for this one, going in for these final minutes. Despite the heat, they're really pushing on. Who do you think could be the difference maker in these final few mi minutes here? The difference maker for Woking. Is it Nana Boto? I think Jermaine Anderson has done brilliantly, I think. Uh, but then, is that a corner? No, goal. Is it a, oh, cor corner now corner for Sully Moore has done this Sol Hill, side. So the difference maker may well be this a corner. defender. <laughs> Mark Beck, number nine for Sully Moore is taller than arguably everyone else on the pitch. He's at the front post. He's heavily marked by about... Three Woking players at the moment. Cuthbert's round him. Wilkinson's round him. So's Akinola. It's thrown in now. Akinola headers it. It's not good enough to clear it all the way. Yaskalain an excellently catch. Can Woking counter? Nana Boateng on the left-hand side. He hasn't gone for him. He's calling for the ball though. Yaskalain sprays it forward. Can it reach Boateng on this left wing? It can't quite, but Wo Woking could capitalise on this, but it's gone out for a throw-in. Darren Saul trying to get in on the action. He wants that throw-in taken quickly. Amund now. Just does Amund pass it to Casey? Casey with the throw in. Can he make something of this? In these final moments, it's out to Jermaine Anderson on the edge of the box. He needs to turn away. Plenty of Solly Hallmore's players on him. It's down to Casey in a bit of space on the left wing. Can he get a ball in? And it's cleared by Jay Ben. That'll be a throw in for Woking. Huge final minutes. We're into the last minute of play. 1 1. Can Woking get this winner? Send the Lathwaite Stadium into jubilation. Casey. 
not quite the long throw an expert, but he could make something of this. They've got options on the edge, options in the box. He's thrown it down to Matt Robinson. He brings it back. He brings it down. He holds onto the ball excellently. Now it's Robinson on the, on the edge of the box. Bradshaw goes past one. Can he get can he get the ball into the penalty area? He's gone down. The referee not pointing to the penalty spot and instead it's a goal kick. I think that was probably right. What what Rock Bradshaw did was keep the ball away and then he got caught. But I suspect the ball was already out by the time that happened. But uh... could that be it? Could that be it? Still one one with ten seconds from the nine minutes originally added onto the full time whistle. Well to the to, to the ninetieth. They should be, be up. I think they should probably add a few minutes on well, mm. a minute on probably for other incidents during this, but whether they do or not we'll see. We'll be updating our PBC Radio, sorry listeners, in a moment, whether that'll be full time or not. Still one one here at the Lathwaite Stadium. Woking looking for that winner, Sully Hall Moores, trying to hold on. It's being flashed around in the centre of the pitch. In the end, Mafusa's put it out for a throw in for Woking. And it's full time here at the Lathwaite Stadium. 1-1 in the end between Woking and Sully Moors as the referee closes full time. Whistle. Woking dominated that game in the end. Had plenty of attacking chances. Really though, Ian, how are you feeling after that one? Well, I'm just looking at Scott Cuthbert on his haunts. He's shaking his head, I think. But I'm also looking at solid help players, hands on knees, down. Both sets of players have really done a terrific terrific sort of investment this afternoon of them themselves uh, you have to say Woking were dominant Woking were absolutely dominant they really really built after they, they conceded that initial goal and it was a weak goal to give away in terms of it came out of nothing it was a, it was a deadly pass through but potentially it came from nowhere and, and now after that one they had the uh, they had the penalty that they missed as well yeah. that's a key moment key moment in that first half yeah, yeah, they were they were dominant. Never really had a chance. Never really made it count. Had their chances. Gave their all. Solihull defended well. Plugged away at the other end. And uh, and you have to say, um, well done to both sets of players. Solihull, I think, will be very pleased having got a point on the road to Woking. Well, they remain uh, unbeaten after eight games in the National yeah, League. It's, it's, yeah. it's quite the feat. Regardless, Woking now have well they, they're now they're now unbeaten in their last three games yeah they've done uh, they've done well in the end extremely well to defy a side that have won all their away games this season so far they created a lot of attacking opportunities considering the the injuries that you touched on earlier on how much do you think that potentially hindered them today do you, i mean do you think we're looking at a different scoreline with reese grigo cox with with reese brown in the side who knows who knows i think i uh, ifs and buts but i think uh i think really it's uh it's been a terrific effort from Woking and uh, today dominant performance. As you say, four games unbeaten. Continue like that, they'll be there or thereabouts as the season progresses. And uh, yeah, well, well done, to, as I say, actually to both sets of players. Well, Ian, thank you for today. You've been excellent. We're about to update our BBC Radio. Sorry, listeners, we're going to end the commentary there. Thank you so much for listening and we will speak to you later. If you want to stick around for this full-time update, as Darren Saar goes over to clap the Woking fans, it's been some feat from his home side. 1-1 in the end. George, in the end, it, unfortunately for Woking, it did continue as 1-1 come the full-time whistle. There were nine minutes added on in the end. They threw everything at it. They had plenty of corners in that final nine minutes, plenty of chances to capitalise. Cuthbert, the centre-back, came in with a couple of, with a glancing header at the end, but it's just narrowly missed past that left-hand post. They started on the back foot, Woking, Sully Hall Moores taking the lead with Josh Kelly, his fourth goal of the season already. It was a composed finish under Will Yaskulainen. Since then, it was...
was kind of like they flipped a switch and they had this they had this tick in them which really made them kind of push for the game and, and, and after that spell they really just dominated it's been all woking and as these players come over as the fans applaud them it's because of this tremendous feat today here it's, it's been absolutely scorching for both sets of players but woking haven't stopped running they haven't stopped trying to, to, to pr press on and make these final chances. They did miss a penalty early on through Amund. That was a key moment in the game. Of course, it would have been 2-1 two, uh, two, otherwise if that went in. Amund did then score later down the pitch, but he also missed a couple of chances himself too. So in the end, it's agony for these home Woking fans and as it ends at the Lathwaite Stadium. Woking 1, Solihull Moors 1. Not too bad. So... Uh